there, we see a glimpse of some of the supporting characters. We see Lestrade. Um, I'm just curious, are there any of the other, either is Professor Moriarty in the picture, or are there any of the other supporting characters throughout the canon make any appearances? The, well, the irregulars? There, there will be Mrs. Hudson, who uh, I don't think we've had a glimpse of in, in five minutes. She's there. Um, and then there may or may not be a couple of others. But okay. you can't see it. Um, but the uh, big regulars are not part of that. Do we have any questions? I love you, Robert! <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's over now. The answer to that question is thank you. You're welcome! <laughs> thank you. Uh, my question is for Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I'd say you are absolutely fantastic in Iron Man, for Zodiac, Tropical Thunder, The Soul of Us, and so forth. Um, um, what was it like for being involved in such a period film? I mean, there's even touching on the steampunk realm a little bit, and to be involved with a, such a character with the intense history that is Sherlock Holmes. Well, again, it was just so odd to me. I, I had been saying to, to, to Joel shortly after the success of Iron Man, I was like, dude, where's our franchise? And he was like, give me a minute. And, um, and shortly thereafter, things had kind of come together. And, and, and Lionel, if you don't mind me saying, had kind of been trying to uh, garnish some interest around Sherlock. And it actually, there, there was a graphic novel type comic book in, in the works about it. And when people started seeing it in that light, it made it a little more uh, palatable. Because sometimes if something hasn't been done for a long, nobody wants to admit, well, that's because we didn't think of it, or we didn't have a vision of it. And so that presentation got it going. And then Joel and I got excited, and me and obviously the missus down there on the end, uh -huh. we like separateness within Unity. Um, and we love uh, working together, and that's always been a fruitful now. thing. So, yeah, we knew it had to be done uh, in period. We knew that we had to really roll up our sleeves and do it justice because what would be lamer than doing a version of Sherlock Holmes, given that opportunity to either sail or dump the franchise for any future takers by making a version of it that isn't quite smart enough. So we really wanted to, to make it, without being too clever for its own good, we wanted to really root it in what we love about these characters. And we wanted it to also be as exciting as what's required nowadays for, um, for a big movie, for the kind of movie we can come and, and sell soap to y'all here about. And so, and a big part of it too, not to, to put McAdams on the spot, was you know, we really searched far and wide to find the right foil and the right, uh, well, she's not a heroine, she's more of a kind of a uh, vixen adventurous. Um, and that was a very important thing because Jude and I had a great chemistry and we, we needed our, uh, we needed our very important third wheel. So casting was a big part of it. And then we, we worked our asses off on this. We worked weekends, we worked afterwards, we worked in the thing. We, we took it really, really, really seriously. And I think that's why we're so proud. Robert is the modern day superhero. I mean, you should see him work. It's incredible. And I know you see it all on screen, but to see him work over three months, and he's, you're so committed, so ripped. <laughs> Not anymore, but I was. <laughs> you're on vacation, right? Yeah, kind of. I'm on the Atkins side. It's working. We have fun, right? Hi, um, this question is for Robert Downey Jr. What did you like about your character? Um, well, I like a, a challenge, and um, I haven't really done a dialect of a, of a specific nature for a while. Um, I mean, you could say Tropic Thunder was a... <laughs> It kind of reminded me of, of doing Chaplin. I knew it would be one of those. I'm, oh, I always get very, I always get really pissy when I'm actually going to have to work hard for a living. Um, I, I don't know why. We'll talk about that later. Um, <laughs> but sometimes it's not about rolling off a log. This was a lot about prep. This was a lot. It was really just about the, getting the right team of people together. So, 
Um, I don't remember what question started me on this tirade, and I'm going to stop right in the... Uh, questions for Robert? It's a good name, by the way. What was it like working with Jude Law's mustache? <laughs> this is the question you've all been waiting for, thank you. You know, we didn't really get along. It's a furious one. It's a fierce one. It's, it's the best hash ever. Here's the thing. You may, if you're really weird and following around me in different phases of facial hair, right before we started shooting, I had a big 70s porno stash going Nice thing. Oh, yeah. like, like you, Robert. <laughs> and it looks good on you. But I was Thank not you. rocking it very much. And I thought maybe this would be good for Sherlock. After me saying we're doing this one right by the book, I started looking for texts that would support me doing what I felt like doing. There was none there. <laughs> Holmes was clean shaven. Watson was another story. Um, when we were at the rap party in the lobby of a fabulous boutique hotel in Manhattan, <laughs> Jude came down, he had promptly shaved his mustache, having worn it for the better part of four months. He was strangely unrecognizable as himself. <laughs> that guy knows how to rock a tash. Thank you very much. Janae Malin Ravino says hello, and she's still a babe, I swear. I swear. Good, I have no recollection. I'm sure it was really fun. <laughs> uh, hi. Uh, first, I just want to bridge on the note that I love you and stay to play it. I hope you keep getting in big movies like this. You're an excellent actress.